Welcome back to the Fighter Interview Show. This is your host, Brandon Halley. I'm joined by Cameron Burton. Yo, Cameron, how's it going, bro? How's it going, brother? How are you? Good, man. Good, man. Before we get started, I want to shout out our sponsors. Shipsco, Dynamite Kickboxing, Project Pantheon, and Virtue Concrete. Cameron, I want to get right to it, man. Talk to me about your journey into martial arts. How did you get started? Well, um, it all started... So I did karate when I was a kid. Uh, briefly, you know, I think I got up to like my orange belt. Uh, I tested for my green belt, failed. And, you know, that was kind of that. Um, and then later on, right after I graduated high school, I was like 18. Um, I just wanted to get back into training. Uh, my dad had trained his whole life. You know, he went to Korea, done some pretty cool things. So I was like, well, I got nothing else to do and I like to fight. So. Why not train and see what happens? So I walk in the gym, um, May 17th, what year was that? Uh, 2020, yeah, May 17th, 2020. It'll be four years this May 17th. And that's that, it kind of just happened, you know? Um, I had just planned on training for fun and maybe fighting eventually. And then within six months, my coach was like, hey, you gotta fight, Uh, you better get ready, so. Wow, what a story, man. I mean, only four years in, yet you're one of the best strikers in Georgia. You're one of the uh, best strikers in the Southeast. I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> you're pretty good, man. So look, for the folks who don't know, the biggest promotion in Georgia, NFC, the champion Tony Hope. Cameron Burton and Tony Hope had a crazy trilogy. Yeah. Cameron taking the belt once, Tony winning it back, and a running back for the third time. I mean, that was an insane fight. So talk to me about the lesson you were able to learn from that rivalry. Um, really, man, just to, uh, 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 really, I learned how to lose in, in that rivalry, you know, because um, before before that, my only loss was to Charlie Miller, you know, uh, and I was 6-0 before that. Uh, so... The taste of defeat isn't something I'm, I was super familiar with, you know. I went from, uh, you know, having that one loss, one draw, to now I have I have three losses. So uh, it definitely taught me how to lose, but not really lose, more so learn, you know. Uh, kind of roll with the punches, hit the ground running after, you know, a, a rough fight. Um, but, yeah, I definitely learned some humility as well, you know, going from the top dog being – to being beat twice in a row, that's kind of, those are like polar opposites. Uh, so yeah, it was very interesting. Um, oh, I also learned uh, that giving up height and weight sucks. <laughs> sucks a lot. Yeah, Tony's a really long guy. So, yep. um, but I mean, you still brought it on, man. So you brought up Charlie. Of course, Charlie's fighting. He's defending his, he's defending his belt. Um, the same belt that he won um, in the King of the Ring tournament that you guys participated in um talk to me about that i mean that's what a year and a half ago now so it's been some change but um talk to me a little bit about that fight um what was going through your head when when charlie's hand got raised and um you know how did you bounce yourself back from that loss um that one was rough you know that that was the first one you know uh first punch always hurts the most right um well but yeah, that was really rough. When when they're reading off the decision, I knew it was close. I knew it was really close because uh, you know he he dropped me in the first round uh, by one and only time ever being getting like a well legitimate eight count in my in my martial arts career. Uh, second round, he did a really good uh, job of keeping me off of him. You know, keeping it very very long. You know, playing to his his strengths. And then third round, I just hit the gas, man, and I came in, um, and, you know, I was like a, I was like a Mack truck. There was nothing that could stop me, you know. I was trying to put him down, and um, I just – I got him in the corner. I hit him with a, a hell of a right hand, probably the hardest I've ever hit anybody in a fight. And he dropped, you know, uh, but I ran to the wrong corner. So he got, like, 15, 15 seconds, give or take, to get up and recover. Uh, but when they read off, when they read off that, uh, that decision, I knew there was a chance, you know, that it could have been his. I thought it was a lot closer than that. They gave me a unanimous decision. I was just heartbroken, man. Long story short, I was heartbroken. Uh, that was a rough one because I really wanted that. 
Yeah, that was a really tough fight, man. Rewatching that, um, you know, you that, like I said, that was a really close fight. I mean, it started off with a banger, and then of course you really put the pressure on in the later rounds. Um, and I don't know if Charlie will appreciate me telling telling him uh, telling you this, but you know, we were talking about uh, over the weekend. He just had his conflict fight, uh, in which he performed really well. And he talked mm-hmm. about how tough that that fight was with you. Um, and mm-hmm. actually, the whole the whole thing, you know. I mean, Charlie on the first round got that last minute drop, and then mm-hmm. you know, with your fight, that was such a grind. And so he talked to me about how tough that whole thing was. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you took out, you took, you learned a lot from that. Um, sure. And the good thing for you is that you've only lost against the best. Um, you know, uh, you 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 fight, you always fight tough guys. Um, oh yeah. And, what I love the most is you also give back a lot to the community, to the fight community. I, I see you always coming up to Dynamite Kickboxing. Uh, shout out to Raul and his team and also our sponsor. Um, I know you're always uh, coming up and training with those guys and showing Malik Parisu what it's about to be a high level, a high caliber fighter like yourself. And of course, you guys are going to be on the WKA team together. So um, talk to me a little bit about the opportunity, how you got the WKA, um, uh, the USA team opportunity and uh, what that means for you. Um, so really, I think it was, um, they had a lot of people drop out, uh, like a lot of people couldn't go this year around. Uh, so they had a lot of vacant spots that needed to be filled. And, um, you know, every time the WK is called, I've always showed up and fought on weight, right? I've never missed weight. I've always been ready to throw down and scrap, you know, leave it all in the ring. Um, and yeah, I just got the call. They were like, Hey, uh, you know, we really like the way you fight. We need we need people to come to Scotland. We would love for you to represent us. And I mean, you know, I'd I'd have to be a crackhead to turn that down. So uh, it's expensive though. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And you know, um, Cameron, what do you do for work? Uh, I'm a welder. I'm a welder. Oh, cool. That's awesome, man. Um, talk to me about Sometimes. how you got into that. Uh, so I got into it uh, through my uncle. Um, uh, he, he's been doing it for, you know, a while. Um, and I was actually working, I worked at desk job for like a, like a good two and a half years. And one day I was just like, man, yeah, I, I'm just, you know, for uh backstory, I'd worked in manual labor, you know, from the time I was like 13 until, until I was 19. Uh, right in right when I started training is you that's like right when I switched jobs uh and I just it wasn't for me man I can't sit there behind a desk you know you see the way I fight I'm very active I like to move a lot um and I just started practicing with him on the weekends and I was like man this is actually kind of fun uh and it pays pretty good so you know that's how I got into that it really wasn't there's nothing too crazy with that yeah that's cool man um I want to give a quick shout out to another welding fighter. This one in the MMA space, uh, Malcolm Wellmaker, shout, fighting yeah, out of sure. failures. Shout out to him, bro. I mean, he's NFC champ, undefeated pro. He's such an awesome guy too. So shout out to him real quick. Um, he's a killer. So Scotland, man. I mean, talk to me about Scotland, man. Like, are you are you excited to go to Scotland? I'm mean, obviously gonna be fighting, but like anything, like have you been looking around to see like where you want to go, uh, like what things you want to go see? Um, honestly, man, I've just had tunnel vision. Uh, you know, I I haven't really had a lot of time to think about Scotland. Um, okay, so don't get me wrong. I'm not like I'm not looking past it or anything like that. I am ecstatic. I'm pumped. But uh, at the same time, you know, I just had a high profile fight against Tony Hope, um, and you know, it, I, we were gonna have the King of the Ring tournament. Now it's just me and Tremaine. Um, and which I feel like is a high profile fight in itself, you know, so I've had a lot of big names ahead of me. So I haven't really had a chance to stop and soak in the fact that, you know, I'm going to be going to Scotland and fighting overseas. Um, but the few moments that I have had time to dwell on it. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm not a loss for words. I'm speechless, man. I'm so excited. Uh, I love to travel. That's really like my main reason for fighting. You know, it's not about money. It's not about that. Like, I love fighting and I love to see new things. Um, it was actually, uh, when I first started training 2020, I was having a conversation with one of my friends, um, right, right around my first fight. And I was like, hey man, 
or he asked me what I what I wanted to do with it, you know, where I saw myself going. And I was like, I really don't care, man, as long as I get to travel the world and fly it, you know. It is what it is. And he just hit me up recently when I made the announcement and he was like, Oh dude, I remember when we were talking about that so long ago and now it's finally happening. Uh, and I was like, Yeah, I can't believe it. It's wild. But yeah. uh, I'm hot, man. Super hot. Yeah, that's that's awesome for you, man. I, same exact reason, man. I love traveling. I want to go see the world. Um and uh, WKA, uh, they offered that opportunity, man. I mean, they're just, they're truly global. You could go fight. I mean, Malik just fought in uh, Aruba. So yeah. perhaps that opportunity is coming your way also. Um, so good luck to you on, uh, of course, the, the, the WKA journey um, in Scotland. But I want to talk a little bit about your very next fight coming up in a couple of weeks. So you mentioned it. Um, if this was a King of the Ring tournament, you would be the only fighter to ever do two King of the Ring tournaments. I mean, you did one, yeah. and now you're doing it again. So that would have been a crazy gauntlet. Unfortunately, you could not make that happen. Um, however, Cameron, you're definitely, you definitely deserve that title shot again. So talk to me about Tremaine. What do you know about him, and what do you think about the matchup? Um, so uh, I really don't – I don't have, like, a lot of knowledge on Tremaine. Um, I know that um, – He's, he mostly fights MMA. Um, so I, I have seen, you know, a couple a couple of his fights. Um, uh, he, he's very hand heavy. You know, he hits hard. Uh, uh, he, he's good. It's, it's going to be a really tough fight. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting to come through there and uh, walk through him at all. I, kn I know it's going to be a tough fight and uh, I'm just doing my best to get ready. Uh, I think the matchup is definitely going to be interesting. Uh, you know, my style versus his. Uh, I feel like I have a very uh, elusive style. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to stand there and bang with you, but I can if I have to. You know, uh, so I, I think it's going to be a very interesting matchup, and uh, I'm very excited to see how it plays out. So am I, Cameron. I am really excited to see how this plays out over five rounds. Um, I'll take a finish, but I would love to see it all go five rounds and really get that <laughs> grind, give the show that people want to see. Um, I know you just got out of training, so I don't want to hold you super long. So I want to get to some of the fun questions real quick. Um, did you watch UFC 300? So, no, I did not. I did it. No, 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 no. I did it. I watched the highlights. I know, man. I missed out on the big card. I did it. I was sleeping because um, I had to work. So, work yeah, comes was, first, man. Out. out of the highlights you've watched, what was your favorite fight and why? My favorite fight was definitely Jamal Hill versus Alex Pereira. Just because Alex finished a fight in Alex Pereira fashion, you know, Poetan came out hands of steel. Everybody was like, oh, uh, Jamal Hill is going to take him down and wrestle him. Like, I don't think it's going to be as easy for a Poetan as you think it is. I was like, yeah, okay, watch. First time he touches him clean with that left hand, he's going to fold. And what did he do? He folded like a lawn chair. I mean, I, I knew it was going to happen. Uh, that, and that, it was just so satisfying to see, you know. Respect to Jamal Hill, but uh, I feel like Poetan deserved that. He's just in a different class, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, how do you fight against a guy that if you get touched at all with his left hand, you're out? I mean, that's, yeah. that's such an impossible task because you're going to get hit with that left hand. And so mm -hmm. unless you also have a chin of steel, um, you're going to go down. I think that's just the facts. So, yeah, absolutely. He's such a tough fighter. And he comes from the kickboxing world, too. So that's also cool. Of course, uh, yeah. Love, love, yeah. love to see <laughs> that. Man. Um, so you do fight at a lighter weight class. But talk to me about some of your favorite foods that you like to go to for your weight cuts um for my weight cut so while i'm actively cutting weight um really man i eat the same thing all the time when i'm like hardcore dieting uh no i haven't had to watch myself uh like as strictly because i'm i'm a naturally lighter guy you know i don't walk around too heavy um but I have been in a crunch, you know, during bulk season where, like, I get off of a 25 fight. I've had to slim down real quick. Uh, so I usually eat white rice, chicken, broccoli, cauliflower, some carrots, uh, and maybe maybe a red potato, and, and that's it. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Four eggs in the morning, a uh, cup of spinach, and then uh, that, that meal I just read off to you for lunch and dinner. Um, everybody gives me a lot of shit for eating the same thing all the time, but 
I mean, you know, if you give your body the same fuel, like you put gasoline in your car every time, you know, it's going to work the way it's supposed to. So uh, I don't, I don't mind eating the same thing all the time because I eat for fuel, not for pleasure. So, yeah, man. And like people saw it. And my parents actually taught me this too, of like, you know, obviously you put unleaded, but like, if you can get it from the same gas station, so it's the same yeah. quality. So this is the same thing you're doing. You know, you're an athlete, yeah, exactly. your body's a machine. So you feed it the same thing. You feed it what it needs and your body's used to it and it operates on that respect to that. And obviously like for the fans who haven't seen Cameron Burton, uh, you could definitely tell this guy eats the same thing <laughs> and he's fucking shredded. So you definitely <laughs> see that in the ring, he's going to be shredded as a motherfucker. He can cut diamonds with that shit. So you can definitely sure. watch that. Um, and then what do you like to eat after your fights, man? Like how do you celebrate what win or loss? You know, how do you celebrate? Um, what do you like to eat? Um, so, I, I have a big thing for Italian food. Uh, I've spoke about this with Raul all the time. I love Portofino's. I will die about that place. Portofino's is so good. Every time I'm in Greenville area, I have to go to Portofino's. That place is amazing. Shout out to Raul for suggesting that place to me. But I, I have like a big thing for Italian food because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm mixed, right? And on my mother's side, we're Italian. So I... Uh, I get that pasta craving often. Uh, so me and my coach, we have to eat Italian after after weighing. And then, you know, if I'm feeling real frisky, the, the night after the fight, I'll have it. Uh, but usually, man, whatever. Uh, like sometimes if my, my junk cravings have been really bad throughout that camp, you know, I, I might go on like a little binge after the fight, you know, just to reward myself. And then, you know, by that Monday, I'm like, okay, I got to get back in shape. Uh, nothing too crazy though. I, I try and keep it, keep my uh, desires corralled in because you know you give too much. It's really hard to keep everything contained uh, as far as discipline goes. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so, um, it sounds like I'm gonna have to try this Italian place too. Uh, oh, dude! You know, so it sounds like I'm gonna have to try this place. You're missing out, man. You gotta have it. You Wait, what do you get it. from there? You gotta tell me. Um, usually I get the, the baked penne al forno. Uh, it's like, it's just pasta with cheese and, uh, uh, just this meat sauce. It's chef's kiss. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, and you can't go wrong with like some lasagna, some spaghetti, some chicken parm. I really, any, you can go to any, just about any Italian restaurant and anything on the menu is going to hit it. Anything. Respect. Uh, I'm definitely going to try that now. Um, Okay, and then give me your favorite striking drill and then favorite strength and conditioning drill. My favorite striking drill. Okay, let's see. Um, hmm, that's a good question. Really? Um, I like a lot. So we have this drill we do where we uh, – we throw hand combinations into like leg kicks. So one side we'll throw, uh, say for example, you know, jab, cross, leg kick, right? Um, and then the other side will parry, parry, check, right? And I, I love that drill because you can work both legs with that drill. Um, and that's just something you don't see enough in kickboxing. You know, I feel like a lot of guys, at the amateur level, just do not check leg kicks at all. And I'm guilty of it myself, which is why I love the drill, because it's so easy to just walk through leg kicks. But uh, I've been on both ends of this. You know, when somebody throws a, a good leg kick and it gets checked in the fight, uh, and you, like, I know you felt that. I felt it in my shin, so I know it hurts you. So I, I, I love working on, on checking. Uh, that's, that's probably my favorite go-to drill, you know. What about for your strength and conditioning? Uh, my strength and conditioning. Uh, so I'm gonna sound a little, a little stupid here, but what is that? Uh, you know the. There's like a, a, a stack. We we stack up plates, and there's this little tube thing that you slide the bar into, um, and you can put weights on the end of it and do the. Uh, uh, explosive oh, um, landline presses yeah yes those that's that's my favorite you know i love to build that punching power um as well as the landmine rotations mm -hmm. when you like go like this yeah yep 
Yeah, yeah man, those those are honestly a lot of athletes say that it's obviously a very athletic lift. Um, it also looks sure. cool, and you feel like you're really getting good work, and simulates what we do in fighting. So yeah, respect to that, man. I, I a lot of fighters have said it because it works. It's it's good it stuff. Does, man. Man. Um, tell me who your favorite fighter is, when and if this is different. <clears throat> Tell me about a fighter that has inspired your style. Okay. Uh, uh, my favorite fighter right now. Oh, man. Um, that's such a good question. There's so many good good ones. Uh, honestly, so I watch a lot of K1, uh, like current day K1, the Grand Prix. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is uh, Masashi Kumara. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, mm-hmm. He's he's a smaller guy, but just uh, his angle work and you know he almost resent. I feel like out of everyone I've seen, he's like the closest to uh, like kickboxing Vasily. Om- almost, you know, and that's kind of a reach because nobody can touch Vasily with the angle work. Um, and then that leads me into my next answer. Uh, Vasily Lomachenko, I feel like has really uh, influenced my style. Uh, and I know that's kind of contradicting because he's a boxer, but I love the word angles. Like I said, I move a lot. I'm not going to stand there and bang with you. Uh, I don't have many brain cells as it is, so I'd like to compare with what I have left. Uh, so, and just that's the sweet science, right? And, and it's in its most pure form, uh, hitting and not getting hit, you know, dancing around your opponent, making them look like a fool. I, I love that aspect of it. Yeah, I mean, everyone respects a guy who can make the opponent look like a fool because they can't get in touch. And I'm a huge fan of Japanese kids. I'm, I'm half Japanese, so oh, okay. that, you know, I already feel that too. But I love watching Japanese K1, seeing that that tight pocket, volume mm-hmm. style, boxing and kicking. Um, I absolutely love that. If you're a kickboxing fan or if you're a kickboxer and you're not watching Japanese K1, even like back in the day, Mm-hmm. Sato and Wakao and all those guys. And if you're not watching them now, you're doing a disservice to yourself. And you can learn so much from that. And I love that you mentioned Lomachenko. I had another fighter who actually mentioned that. Um, and the way you can shift and you can combine that volume style striking with that footwork and angle work. Mm-hmm. So I um, love that too. I love those two. I'm hoping to see some of those styles, uh, of course, for this title fight. Of um, course, of course. And any last shout outs you want to give out, Cameron, before we let you go? Um, okay. Yeah, I got I got two or three if that's the love. Um so number one, shout out to uh Niori Masaki for getting signed to one championship. Long overdue. Long overdue. I cannot wait to see his first one championship fight. I'm buying the pay per view. I don't care if I have to be up at three in the morning to watch it and it's on a work night. I'm watching it. Um I That's actually my favorite fighter. Oh, dude. Yeah, he was my favorite at one point, too, man. Death by knees. You got to love him. You got to love him, man. Uh, just his pocket work is just next level. It's it's um, insane, dude. The way he picks shots and finds your weakness, it's insane. Uh, dude, I mean, uh, I love watching him pick people apart. Uh, you know, if, if I were to stand in the pocket and fight, that's who I would want to fight like, right? Uh, and besides that, man, my team, you know, always being there for me, uh, grinding out camp. Uh, you know, you fought yourself. I'm sure you know what it's like to be on the receiving and giving end of a fight camp. Um, I feel like a lot of teammates don't get enough credit for what they do, man, because it takes a lot to give your, your teammate work. Because at, at least in my gym, we really push the, push the pace uh, when it gets close to the fight. You know, we're kind of thumping, really getting into that fight speed. And it's not pretty. Uh, it's not pretty at all because – you know, when we get in the ring, we come to hurt people, right? So to, to train to hurt people, you have to hurt people all the time. You know, and I mean, we don't kill each other at the gym, but sometimes we're not nice to each other. So big shout out to my, my training partners, you know, for taking and giving. Um, shout out to my coach. Uh, it seems like every time I have a question or I need help with something, he's always there. Uh, he's like a like a fighting encyclopedia. <laughs> and, you know, anytime I need anything about fighting, he's always got it ready to go. And then uh, last, shout out to everybody who supports SKC, uh, Raul, yourself, the fans, the fighters, even my opponent, you know, everybody that makes this possible. 
because uh, without all of you guys, where would we be now? You know, we'd we'd all be out fighting in the street, you know, doing something stupid. So, big, big shout out to everybody that uh, it just helps keeps the ball keeps the ball rolling for for us fighters and kickboxers and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. But pretty well, very well said, Cameron. Shout out to the entire fight community for keeping each other going. Um, of course, all the promoters, all the fighters, and like you said, the teammates, you know, teammates don't get, and not, you know, you don't see the teammates work, but the teammates are putting in work just as hard as the fighters too. So shout sure. out to everybody. Thank you, everybody. Guys, this was Cameron Burton. Come watch him fight live May 11th at the Foundry Group of South Carolina for his title fight against Tremaine Davenport. This will be a five round banger. You're not going to want to miss this. Be there in person. And hey, fight start at two o'clock. So you're not even going to have to be staying up that late. You know, yeah. you get to go home around like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, go out with your family, go out, go get a drink, whatever, man. So <laughs> hey, it's, a, it's an early start, early finish too. So definitely come watch in person. The Foundry is an awesome host, uh, awesome host for these events. Shout out to our sponsors. Um, otherwise, we'll see you guys on May 11th.